Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today we're going to show you how to make a muzzle brake. And we're going to use a piece of scrap brass. And uh, it's not going to be very large in size, this brake, because it's a very small piece of scrap. But um, we're going to do some different kind of shaping to it and probably put some uh, cut lines in it, that sort of stuff. But uh, this is going to be a muzzle brake that's going to fit a Crossman 2240 barrel diameter, which is 11 millimeters. So you've got the 2240, the 2250, 2260, the 2289, uh, many other models, even uh, some of the Crossman 760s. It'll fit those barrel diameters because they're about the same, actually. Um, they're, they're very, very close to being exactly the same. They're within like a couple of thousandths, so it'll still fit nice. Um, so, but first thing we gotta do is we gotta get our piece of brass concentric. Um, this one's been through a bit of a beating because it was from part of another project. And uh, so we've gotta make everything nice and concentric again and get a nice finish going. So this video is gonna be done in different stages. Uh, just because of how much time it actually takes to make a muzzle brake is, is quite lengthy. So we're gonna break the uh, video up into different sections so you'll see part one, two, three, and so on. So. Um, Let's get this piece uh, turned down even with the other end that I had already started. further into the chuck we want as much as possible into the chuck just so that when we're drilling it we don't get any flex in the metal because you don't want too much sticking out of the chuck when you are drilling it um, and even doing lathe operations uh, turning down your diameter you want you know as little as possible so you don't have to use a live or a dead center in there so we're going to center drill this next. It's always very important to center drill. Um, these are just um, extremely stiff drills basically is what they are. Let's see. And um, so they don't allow for any kind of flexing like a normal drill bit would do. And so as long as your tail stock is nicely centered with your chuck, then when you drill your center into your piece, um, you'll get it dead center. So the idea behind that is to get these to be dead center so you get a nice concentric hole in there and you're lined up good. going to start drilling with will depend on what size of center drill you're going to use and also how far in you're going to go with that center drill. I usually don't go more um, than just getting the, the tip of this center drill in there. I don't take it up to the countersink portion of it 
So I'll just take it about that far. So the next drill bit we're going to use is going to be a quarter inch drill bit. And I like using these titanium drill bits because they cut really nice. Now our quarter inch, so that's going to be our main bore size. So if you want to know what that is in millimeter, um, I'm going to show you that here. Quarter inch is actually 6.3 millimeter. So that gives you plenty of clearance for a 22 caliber pellet or even a 177 caliber pellet. Now again, you, you, you want to watch how fast you feed this in and you're going to take the quarter inch all the way through the length of the muzzle brake. Now, if you are making a large muzzle brake, um, you know, four, five, six inches, then you'll have to step up to different lengths of the same size of drill bit. And I have drill bits that are actually um, 12 to 14 inches long um, because I've had to make some extremely long breaks and you've got to take them in steps with different lengths as you go. So you don't start with like a big long drill bit because it has too much flex in it. So you want to start out short, bring it up, little bits bring it up little bits you know and then gently ease it all through and if you do it right you should get a nice straight uh, hole all the way through your piece without any problems to keep the hole clear because not all the chips can make it out so you don't want it to start cluttering up and then jamming and skating your bit out to the side. hole drill through our next step is to go to our 11 millimeter drill bit I always take it right up I don't uh, go little bits at a time but you can if you want um, I prefer with a quarter inch size hole to jump right into that 11 mil and this way I know I'm getting a good even cut going in now we're only going to want to go in uh, approximately an inch into this so what we're going to do is we're going to take our calipers and we're going to set the caliper at one inch. Okay, so now we got our caliper set at an inch. We're going to put our drill bit face up to it and we're going to get a piece of electrical tape in this case. I actually 
you've made um, a couple of um, uh, drill stoppers at one point. I never made one for this drill. So we're just going to use the tape as a guide so that we don't go past our one inch. So just to show you how we did that, I'm not sure if you can see in the picture. What we've done is we've set up our calipers here at one inch and then we put the drill bit, the tip, at the front face here and to the back face of the other jaw and we get it as close as we can to one inch. So I know I'm actually um, just a hairball difference so between the point and the back I should get within a couple of thousandths of my one inch. You know, it's not that overly critical if you're like, you know, an inch and, you know, 20 or 30 thousands. It's okay. It's not a huge critical thing. So, but I wanted to only go in about an inch and that's about it. So other guns I have to go deeper, but this one I can do it at just an inch. So we've got that all set up. to our lathe here and let's drill this thing. got our, our 11 millimeter hole drilled. I'm going to take this out. We'll take our tape off because we don't need it there anymore. And that goes to garbage. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just take this out of here. Now you'll notice I've got this end here turned down. This piece, will, like I said, it was from a scrap project. There was actually threads on here so when we're done with this break we're going to actually bring this whole piece in on an angle into itself so it'll make like a cool point on it so which you'll see shortly so right now we want to do the back taper on our break so we're gonna leave a little over an inch inch and a quarter sticking out so if you want to know exactly what's sticking out we can check that for you and show you So we've got an inch plus uh, 56 thousandths, so not much, just a little over an inch. So it's actually, I think it's closer to, let me see, uh, I'm sorry, I was incorrect, it's actually just under an inch. 859. So we're just under an inch uh, sticking out here. You gotta watch calipers that you always reset them all the time. Okay, so that's in there. We want to make sure that's good and secure. So we'll tighten down all three jaws. Okay, 
Now we're going to switch over to a different cutter altogether, which I have in a separate block. And I use this for making a lot of my tapers. So it works really well for this. like our cone taper on the back of the brake. So now we're going to go back to our first cutter. Now what we want to do here is face off the, the back end a little bit. So let's change to part two now. We're going to skip over to the front, so I'm going to shut the video off, restart it, and we'll go to the next part. Okay, guys, well, welcome to part two of uh, making a muzzle brake. So we've got this turned down end on the front here that we want to bring this other edge into it, do some shaping. So again, we're going to switch back to uh, the cutter we used to make the taper on the back of the brake. And we're going to try and see what kind of a taper we can get going at the front here. face off the front of this because we don't want it too thin on the front. Okay, so that should be good for the front. So now we've got a bit of a real good pitch in there. So we're going to th now thin down the diameter of this muzzle brake. to give it a little bit more stick out because we're going to have to turn both ends down to make it all even.
Okay, so we've got the diameter taken down quite a bit. So the next thing we want to do is fine tune this, this cone front and uh, get it looking a little bit smoother out. So we still got a bit of a ridge, so now what we're going to do is we're going to smooth it in. So for that we're going to go at a much higher speed rate and we're going to file it with a fine file. So we're going to bring it up to 970 RPM for this. And we're going to go gentle light strokes. You don't want to push hard into this. tuned a little bit. Now the next step is to get the two diameters to match. And we're going to go back to 350 RPM for this. as we're going to get it. It's not going to be 100% perfect. It's in a three jaw chuck, but we can get rid of these lines and we reshape with sandpaper after, which will be the next part. So you notice we lost a lot of our taper back here, but we still got lots of uh, depth in there to play with. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out that other cutter again. We're going to give it just a little bit of touch ups.
bit of our shoulder back for a little bit of looks there. So up to 970 we go. So that's getting a little thin there, so I want to thicken that up just a little bit because you don't want it sharp edged in there. You also don't want it too thin or it can create a weak point. So now we're going to face the front a little bit. Take this out. That's our basic shape we got going on. So let's go to part three and we'll put a couple little decorational rings in here to kind of make this look like a little bit of a pallet or a bullet head type of thing. Okay guys, so uh, welcome to part three. Now we're going to put some decorational rings into this break. Just to make it look a little bit more presentable, um, like a bullet type of thing. So um, let's check our thickness we got. Um, yeah, we got some room to play in there. So let's see exactly what we have. So we got about 0 0.560, so almost half an inch of depth in uh, from the front to where this shoulder is actually going to meet the barrel. So this is where we got to watch where we uh, do things. So we're going to move into uh, a threading tip cutter for doing this next part. Now for doing this part, and because I'm going into brass, I'm going to have a little bit more than normal stick out on my cutter. And two things I want to do here is make sure it uh, looks pretty centered. We'll find out how well it cuts. So. break a little bit more. And remember we only have that half inch depth. So what we do is we find out where it ends and then we're going to go in about an eighth of an inch. in that way so now I gotta shift my angle on my cutter a bit
So our next step after this is we're going to do a little bit of sanding on this. But after we do the sanding, we're going to drill and tap the hole, clean it up, and then we're going to polish this thing to a nice high polished finish. So um, I'm going to get out my arbor here, so I'm going to have to move the camera. So I actually have a special arbor just for doing this with. Put a spacer in this one. Okay. Alright, so now it's mounted up in the arbor. So now I'm going to get some sandpaper out. Let's see what we got here. I've got some 120 here, that'll work. All I want to do is smooth this out a little bit get some of this ugly finish off. Yeah, that's running in there now. Still that a little bit. Right, so I'm gonna have to clean this up a little bit first. I guess that's about have a problem with my arbor in here. Well, I'm going to have to uh, do it without the arbor. I'm just going to have to build another arbor. Okay, so doing this without the arbor, not a big deal.
now. surface that as soon as we drill it and clean up the little burr that's going to get made uh, from threading the hole, we'll be all set to uh, put this through the polisher. So uh, stay tuned for the next part. Hey guys, welcome back. Alright, now we're going to uh, drill the uh, tap hole for the uh, muzzle brake. And for that, we're going to use a 1 8 drill bit. Now, what I do is I use uh, another chuck that I have here. And I've got a, basically a sewing pin installed in it. And what I do is I eyeball that so that it's even. So I've got equal amount on each side. So when I drill this, it gets drilled centered. That looks actually really good right there. So now we'll just take this out of the way and we'll grab our 1 8 drill bit. Now you'll notice I'm not using a center drill on it this time. My center drill is short, so between the length of it sticking out when it's in the chuck to getting to where I need it, it's not going to be quite long enough. So what I do is I put the 1 8 titanium bit in. So I love these because they're real sharp. Always tighten down all three jaws too on your drill press. And uh, I actually have videos that talk about this and why. Now we got it centered. We're going to go up to where we're going to put the hole. Which is going to be about here. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to lightly hold this. Now our drill press speed right now. Um, just to tell you where it's set at. is at 540 RPM, which is more than sufficient. And we're just barely going to touch this down on the brass. You don't want to start the machine first and then go into it. You want to have it touching there first so that the tip of the bit makes a very teeny, teeny little impression. And then you just let it do its own thing. And just let the weight of your arm relax. actually start drilling it for you and it won't skate this way. Okay, so now we got our drill done for our tap hole. Take our drill bit out of there. Now, if you're a Canadian, and you got a Canadian tire store obviously nearby, these are the drills I'm using. And they come in a, a folder case that folds like an X. 
don't know how well you can see that, but I'll just zoom out. Anyway, it's these here. It's a 21 piece set. These are the ones I use for doing a lot of uh, drilling into brass and stainless steel. They're actually really good, especially for tap holes. I like them for that. So they do a great job. And I got a nice point on them. And you can do hundreds and hundreds of holes without having to worry about dulling it. Okay, so our next stage here, we're gonna go over to the vise and we're gonna mount our muzzle brake into the vise so that we can tap the threads. Now, normally I'd use a set of soft jaws, but I'm not gripping this very much and I still have some sanding and polishing to do yet. But I'm just gonna get it so that it just, just holds the piece in there. This way I'm not going to damage anything at all. And we'll get our tap out. Now that was a 1 8 drill bit. So our tap for that is going to be an M4. Let's get it out of the package here. It's an M4 by 0 0.7. Okay. And that's going to be our uh, tap size for the uh, set screw. Now, even though this is brass, um, I still use a tap fluid with this most of the time, uh, especially with aluminum, but I do use it as well with the brass because it does help make a nice clean thread. So I just put a little bit here around the hole. Now this tap I'm using is a real expensive tap. And it's actually designed to also be able to thread into a lot of furious metals, including um, most, pretty much all grades actually of stainless steel. Uh, it'll go through without any hassle. And I've run several threads with just this tap alone, and I bought spares just in case I ever broke one again, because I did break a cheaper tap once. But this tap has got very nice threading capability. It does a very beautiful thread. So as long as you've got a really good um, tap drill size, uh, this will make a, a, a perfect thread in there without any problem. Cuts really nice and easy. So quality of your taps make a huge difference in getting your tap hole size proper too. It also helps. So that's it. We've got our hole in there. So now what we're gonna do is chuck this back up on the lathe. We're gonna clean out the inside burr. We're gonna clean up the top side burr, and then we're gonna polish this thing. So let's bring the camera back over here. Now, to take care of the inside burr, we're gonna take some 120 grit sandpaper and roll it up. Jammer in the hole there, and we're at 970, which is good. And we'll just finish off that hole with some 600 grit. enough. Take this top burr edge off, so we need some 120 for that. So just unroll our piece that we started with there. And then we'll just flip this again, clean off the other end a bit. so much to remove.
watch your fingers around the chuck when you do this sanding stuff. I have a lot of experience, which also equals up to a lot of um, hit knuckles over the years doing it. So we'll clean up our lathe and our chuck later. Now, we managed to get our arbor going again uh, between videos. So we're going to use our arbor to do the polishing with. Okay, so now i got a piece of aluminum on the front that protects the nose. The tricky part to this too is not much of this nose area is going to get hit because of the spacer I had to put in. So that I have to actually take it off the uh, arbor after and uh, do it by hand. So anyways, um, we're going to shut this video down, go to the next one, and uh, start polishing this uh, muzzle brake up and making her nice and shiny. Okay guys, how's it going? Welcome back again. Now this is our last part. Uh, well, technically the last part. Last part for making this thing. I'll actually uh, mount it up on a gun as the final, final part. So you see what it looks like on a gun. But uh, this is where we're going to do our polishing process. And uh, I use this green polishing compound number six. It's actually made to work with uh, a lot of different materials and it works with brass. So uh, we've got our, our drill press set up at uh, 2180 RPM for this. Which actually will work quite well. And all we want to do is touch it lightly going back and forth and rotating at the same time. press hard in this because you don't want to overheat the brass and start deforming the brass because you can actually deform the brass. I've done it. And then it really screws your muzzle brake up completely. So I, I don't put hardly any pressure on this when I do it. And I keep it going. And I do allow for cool off periods too. Being on the arbor doing this, you can't tell how hot the brake's getting other than by feeling the front here, you'll know it's starting to get warm. Then you touch your brake, it's getting really hot. And at that point, you want to stop for a minute, let it cool down, and also check your work. And we still got some lines in here to deal with, and uh, we're going to have to get those out as best we can. So we're going to let this sit and cool for a few minutes. Now, I'm not going to do the whole video of... Um, start to finish here on the polishing part just showing you how it's done so we're going to stop here so the last segment of this video you're going to see is it's going to be completely done cleaned up get all the compound residue off which i use actually um, dish soap and uh, usually a nail brush to get stuff out of grooves but if i don't have grooves i use dish soap and as hot a water as i can handle on my hands and I uh, take it off that way, dry it off with a nice towel, blow all the water out, and then dry it out um, carefully with rags so I don't scratch the finish. And um, then we mount her on a gun, and uh, we'll be finished at that point. So we're going to take it, um, I'm going to finish this off in a few minutes, go to our next segment, uh, where you'll see it mounted on the gun. So uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and um, we'll see see on the last piece there. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, this is our final part on how to make a muzzle brake and I just put it on my 2240. Um, it's because I didn't feel like putting it on my rifle right now, but anyway, you get an idea how it looks and um, I do still have to shorten up the set screw on it, but uh, but I'll just show you this as a, as a quick sort of thing. But uh, 
as you can see she's all polished up nice and uh, looks pretty cool now it is possible to put a front sight pin on this if need be um, you know if you want to put it onto a pistol or um, you know onto a rifle that you're just going to use uh, open sights on but otherwise you know leave it the way it is throw a red dot on your pistol or uh, pistol scope or on a rifle with a rifle scope and it's totally ideal the total length of this brake by the way is about 1.6 inches long and uh, it's about half an inch in diameter total diameter so uh, she's pretty small but uh, looks a little bit like a like a bullet like a hollow point type bullet and uh, just to show you the, the front end there too so get this into some sunlight so there's the other side of it so anyways, that's uh, step by step on how to make a muzzle brake. Now total polishing time um, to get it to this state was approximately 45 minutes. Um, that's, you know, with taking, you know, brakes and stuff to let the metal cool back down. So that's not bad for a small little muzzle brake, you know, so the better you can clean it up um, with sandpaper to get it to a more of a polished finish before uh, polishing it on a buffer wheel a lot easier and less time consuming it's going to be of course on the final polishing so uh, but this is how I do them and uh, of one way that I do them I do many different styles and for many different types of guns other than crossmans so you know if you want one made just uh, email me and ask and there is an email address on our website and you'll see the link to our website in the description of this video and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll uh, talk to you again thanks for watching